everybody has an intuition, obviously, and everybody has intuitive gifts, like real gifts. And everyone can exercise their intuitive gifts like a muscle. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world insider podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hello, my passion maker. This is Miriam Shulman, your curator of inspiration. And you're listening to episode number 185 of the Inspiration Place podcast. Now, there has been literally thousands of new listeners to the show. So if that's you, if you, in other words, if you're new around here, I just wanted to take a moment to welcome you and thank you for being here. And whether you're new around here or you've been around for a while, I just want to let you know how grateful that I am that you're here. I would love for you to come and say hello to me. I love connecting with my listeners over on Instagram. I'm at Shulman Art, S-C-H-U-L-M-A-N-A-R-T over there. And I'd love to say hi. Okay, so today we're talking all about how to improve your intuition to unlock greater creativity. So in this episode, you're going to discover the steps that you'll take on that journey to raising your vibration so that you can use spiritual guidance or the divine or whatever higher powers you believe in and use that intuition to increase your creativity. Our guest today is going to share that journey with you that you take when you're on that road. And I also share a lot of my own personal experiences. I've been downsizing my home of 25 years and preparing to move to New York City. And taking a physical journey and decluttering has created huge shifts for me, seismic shifts, in fact, both internally, which have affected my creativity and my mindset and all things. So we are going to be sharing today with you a lot, both on the generic level, as well as on a personal level, how this all has been affecting me. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to make sure that you knew that I've curated a binge-worthy playlist of all my favorite episodes that focus on similar topics as today. So on mindset. Now, if you want to get your hands on it and it's totally free, head on over to shulmanart.com and shulman is S-C-H, shulmanart.com forward slash playlist. You'll be able to grab your binge worthy mindset playlist over there. And now on with the show. Today's guest is a master intuitive business coach, psychic medium, and energy healer. Her mission is to help soul-guided leaders, influencers, artists, and entrepreneurs get sold out with soul clients by amplifying their spiritual gifts, activating their big soul mission, and releasing the energy blocks tethering them down. She's the founder of Soul Guide Academy and well-versed in the complexity of discovering one's soul mission. Using her genuinely unique perspective of the world, she shares priceless wisdom and insight regularly on Soul Guide Radio, a podcast for soul-guided influencers ready to unlock massive soul-aligned success. Please welcome to the inspiration place, Allison Scammell. Hey, Allison, welcome to the show. Hi, Miriam. I'm so thrilled to be here. We're so excited to have you. Okay, I got my crystals out just for you. Are you a crystal junkie? Uh, they're behind me. I wish I'd have got them out too, but they're they're in the foreground. Ooh, loving it. Do you know what this what is? What is that? I have no idea. Some sort of graphite <laughs> something. Okay, so for the people who can't see us, it's like, <laughs> I think it's actually <laughs> petrified wood. Would that make sense? 
Like yes. it's like a rust color and it has like a, a jagged edge. So my husband and I, we bought a farmhouse up in the country. And then we always stop on the way at this small town called Wurtsboro because they have a vegan cafe. So we pick up our food and they have a crystal shop. Oh my gosh. So, and the vegan cafe, they're we- very, they have no concept of time and they like, they're always late no matter how early we call it in. So I like will walk up and I'll buy something for myself. That is amazing. I have to tell you, I live, I live in the Netherlands and I live near the largest pet store in the Netherlands. What? This, yes. The story has a point related to what you just said. So there's this huge pet store. There's flamingos. There's uh, parrots. Yes. Flamingos just kind of roaming around and you can get any sort of animal supply you could ever need for any kind of animal. And then at the end, at the end, it's like this metaphysical crystals oils, uh, Wait, all sorts of crazy. I'm still th- confused by the flamingos in the, <laughs> in the Netherlands. <laughs> flamingos. It is the coolest store in the world. And I just love, I can go there and I can get my doggy poop sacks and my crystals all in one place. <laughs> I mean. That is awesome. What kind of dog do you have? I have a Spanish greyhound named Astrid and she's the love of my life. Yeah, greyhound is one of the oldest dogs in art history. Oh, you know this. All right, go ahead. Yes. Share to the conversation. uh, The Spanish Greyhound actually comes from Egypt originally. It's the only dog breed mentioned in the Bible, and it is one of the most ancient dog breeds. Yes. I did like a whole Facebook Live on that, actually. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. all All the Greyhounds at the Metropolitan. Well, I, I had a little help. So on the Metropolitan Museum website, uh, they, they probably still have it because they put a lot of effort into this. They have either their curators or art historians pick one very tiny detail like eyes or dogs or whatever. So this one curator picked the Greyhound. And that's how I learned all about it. Like, And he went through every work of art where the Greyhound is featured and how elegant they are. And then how it influenced fashion that people wanted to dress like a greyhound. Oh, my gosh. I'm just liking you all the more, Miriam. I'm I'm totally I've only had this dog for a year, but now I'm like a greyhound groupie. I didn't know anything about greyhounds like a year and a day ago, but they are so elegant and they They are. are so beautiful. They're just like she's like a dainty lady. She's my Spanish lady. Okay, so we'll make sure in the show notes, and I have to write this down because I keep saying things like this on the air, and then it's like, <laughs> I wonder if my team is actually listening to me and following up. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, I will definitely send you the Greyhound video link from oh, the Met, and I will do my best to put it in the show notes. And listeners, if I don't have it there, just message me and we'll fix that. Like anytime, oh. anytime I say something and it's not there... <laughs> It's not that I'm yeah. lying. I just like, <laughs> I, I did an ADD thing and I forgot. Okay. All right. So, Aww. so is there anything magical with greyhounds? I'm trying to like move it into the, today's content. <laughs> well, I am a very, you know, spiritual kind of person. So I believe, I believe that these really ancient dog breeds and, 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 and even mutts, it doesn't have to be an ancient breed. You know, there's a lot of consciousness inside of some dogs like they are high and animals, yes. animals. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, I can't speak on behalf of all greyhounds, but I can speak on behalf of mine that, oh my gosh, there is a high conscious consciousness being inside there. Almost like you're, you're interacting with another human. That's how mm. it feels to me. Yeah. Do, you know, we always think that cats are smart because they ignore us, but, but actually the research says dogs are smarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that because Astrid acts like a cat. She's very feline. She she's not the dog who wants attention all the time. And mm. I kind of wish she did. I wish she would always want to cuddle with me, but she doesn't. She's like a cat. She lets you know now is cuddle time. Now is leave me the bleep alone, please. Okay, good. Well, she has yes. opinions, and and we respect that. Correct. We very cat like. Yeah. She likes she- to lay in the sun. She suns herself like a cat. She rubs her body on your legs like a cat. And if she's 25 kilos, she's like over 50 pounds. So it's not, she can like kind of blow you over. Big dogs. I know greyhounds, not greyhounds, but um, like Great Danes will do this. When they're standing, they'll lean against you. Greyhounds do that too. Absolutely. Yep. It's very cozy. That's cool. When she does that. It is cool. 
All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's okay. move. Let's move into intuition. The intuition of cat. the dog. Intuition of the cat. And now intuition of artists. By the way, I, yes. I, I'm not really a dog person. The cat. Oh. My cat acts like a dog, though. Okay. Well, I have a dog who acts like a cat. Yeah, so we're, we you know, yeah. There you go. Okay. So yeah. First of all, how? Uh, okay. Before we get into the to what our artists should do, I have to ask this. Like. Whenever somebody says they're a psychic medium, so what even does that mean? Expl could you explain that? Like, what is that? Like, how did you discover you have some sort of extra power or do you feel everybody has that? I feel everybody has it, you know, and it just like everybody can play basketball. Some people are meant to play on the Olympic team or whatever, you know, some oh, people are meant to play it, some aren't, yeah. right? And so everybody has an intuition, obviously, and everybody has intuitive gifts, like real gifts. And everyone can exercise their intuitive gifts like a muscle. Everybody has the opportunity to go to the gym. I call it going to the gym of your intuition mm. and exercising those muscles. And basically what you're doing is you're opening the door. If, if you look at yourself, if you will, if, if your, your experiences, you have your human self and your, your spiritual self, your being self, your non-physical self, right? It's that non-physical self where the intuition comes from. That's where that higher power, that higher knowledge, it has the answers. It knows what your next step is going to be. Tapping into that is when we create at our fullest and highest. So if you see the door between your human self, which is more that egoic, it's your personality, you're here having an experience, not like the bad part of you. It's just the part of you that is not as, you know, it's, it's the part of you that can get up into your head and overthink things. It's the part of you who doesn't necessarily know the next step. And it's that part of you that's always learning and trying to figure things out. So what we want to do when we go to the gym of our intuition is just open that door, crack it open wider and wider and wider so that higher knowledge can come through with greater ease and clarity. So back to your question, I call myself a psychic medium. It's kind of a funny title, but I want people to know that I have a really open channel. Why am I an open channel? It's kind of a, I have a different story. A lot of people are kind of born very open. I was not. I was born with a super closed up door. I didn't know what an intuition was. I certainly didn't know what a psychic medium was. And then I had a near death experience in 2009 mm. and it blew my door open. So I went from completely closed off to completely open, open to non-physical consciousness and wisdom, like kind of overnight from this experience. And so that's what makes me a medium. I can really, with great ease, kind of channel the other side, if you will. Okay. You and know? now this experience that happened before you had children, is that right? Like I'm trying to 13 years. Okay. Yep. So before now, I had children. Do you feel that you have womb wisdom? Oh yeah. Sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, and now I have a, a, a friend who is is also a psychic medium and she she was worried because she had to have a hysterectomy about like how that would affect her i was like well there's womb wisdom but there's also the first of all the womb is just the the physical womb you still have that even when you don't have the, the body part but there's also the what i call crone wisdom like i found like when i turned 50 so i'm a, i'm a bit older than allison um <laughs> when i turned 50 and <laughs> <laughs> my youthful years were behind me, uterus or no, I found like I had an awakening too. Like there was like a, a reaching a different level of consciousness. So you as the expert of all of these things, me as just the layman who just like repeats things I hear. First explain to us what womb wisdom is. Yeah. So this is how I would approach it. We have a physical body, right? Clearly, you know, we have our human suit. Deeper than that, and it depends on how you look at it, but I, I, to me, it's like a deeper inside of us. We have an energy body, right? And that energy body is really where our intuition comes from. It's where our, our ability to connect to the divine comes from, our, our ability to connect to the universe or source energy or however you would experience that sort of all-loving, all-knowing, all-wise energy that we're connected to. And the womb wisdom which I think we all have to some degree. Even men? We have to I like think clarify. So. Okay. I think so. And the reason why is my belief is that we've all lived many, many lifetimes. Mm, 
-hmm. And we've all lived as men and lived as women. And if, if we're here in this more evolved, your listeners have all had many, many lifetimes and they've been a mom in a past lifetime, even if they're not a mom in this lifetime. And our energy body remembers that. Our energy body remembers all of our lifetimes. However, if we've had children in this lifetime, that womb energy is going to be more powerful. It's going to be more connected. And the thing that makes the womb so magical, because it is the giver of life, and it is one of the portals where non-physical energy comes in. When the soul comes into the body, into the, the baby that's growing in the tummy, that is a very, that's, that's an open portal to the non-physical realm. That's all intuition. That's all, that's high vibey stuff, high consciousness stuff. So I, you know, so yeah, moms have that special thing and it is in the womb. And, and like all things, some moms have more of a more open channel than others. It doesn't mean one is better than the other. It's just some of us are more open in certain areas than others. So probably the, the women who have really open womb energy they probably, I imagine, might be working with other mothers. You know, they're the ones that are called to help heal mothers or work with mothers or work with children. They, they typically will be called into that type of work. You were talking about intuition being like something you can work on, like exercising in a gym. So I assume that you have exercises that people can start working with. Can you share a few of those? I do. I have a beautiful exercise. And it really is kind of like uh, it's a hero's journey. And our intuition evolves through our lifetime and it gets more powerful as we age. So I'm not at all surprised to hear that when you hit 50, Miriam, you felt like you were like, wow, like I am more plugged in. Like my consciousness is higher because I'm sure it was. It evolves over time, it gets powerful. That's why, if you look at ancient cultures, it was the elders they looked to, not just because they had the human experience in this lifetime, they were, the elders are often at a higher consciousness. So they are getting that, that higher wisdom coming through. So that, that is crone up. wisdom. Ah, that is crone wisdom. Aha, <sighs> yes, that is a thing. It is a thing. <laughs> That is totally a thing. Okay. And I love how that's called. I love how that sounds. Yes, 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 yes. So our intuition grows whether we mindfully with intention do anything with it or not. But why not? Why not try to amp up your intuitive gifts to its fullest? Because it's only going to have positive effects on your experience. It only is going to. It's not just a fun thing to do because spirituality is kind of cool. It actually leads to more joy in your process. And when you have more joy in your process, you attract more buyers. You become that magnetic person. You're creating at your best and it absolutely leads to more sales. It leads to more abundance and from a place of joy. So how can this look? How can we, with intention, bump up our intuitive gifts, essentially? It's like you're literally like upgrading your energy. And I'm going to explain what this means in a minute. And how it works in a lifetime is you have periods where you like have an upgrade. Like when you turn 50, like you felt like this upgrade, like, wow, I just like up level. Yeah. And but let me just say one thing about that. It wasn't just the magic of the five zero. I think I entered menopause at that time. So it was like truly a, a life, a physical shifting for me of both, not just a number. Yes, totally. And that's a super powerful time. So that was absolutely an upgrade for you. And sometimes, so sometimes we experience upgrades. Obviously, when I had my near death experience, that was a huge upgrade, right? From nothing to a lot. Sometimes in our human experience, it's a tweak and refine. Like we're just getting tweaked a little bit and both, both times are important. So how can we affect this upgrade, this up-leveling or this, even this adjusting to opening our door to our intuition wider? Well, it kind of mirrors the hero's journey. If you're familiar with the Joseph Campbell hero's journey, the first thing you have to do, there's five stages to it, which I'm going to share with you right now. And they're really powerful. And now this 2022, the 222 energy that's on planet right now is a really, really powerful time. Mindfully, with intention, actually raise your energetic frequency, and which, I, which is what these five stages will do. And whenever your energetic frequency is raised, you're opening the door 
to the divine, to your intuitive gifts, to your spiritual gifts, to, you know, the other side of the veil, however you experience that. And all your artistic gifts. And all of your artistic gifts, 100%. And you're opening the door wider. Okay, stage one. Pretty simple. All these stages are both simple and profound at the same time. You have to invite it in. It's the invitation. And it might sound kind of like, oh, well, that's kind of, yeah, well, no, but the, the, the divine, not the, the non-physical world is a very polite world. And very high vibrational consciousness is not going to impose its will on you unless you invite it in. It's a very polite, it's very polite in the non-physical world. So you have to invite it in. And by saying, I invite in a deeper connection to my intuitive, intuitive gifts, to the divine, to the universe, whatever words feel good to you, you're also putting your energy into an allowing state. You're saying, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for what may come because I'm going to get in a minute that some of the stages can be a bit uncomfortable and I am ready and I'm prepared for an up leveling. And you're just kind of saying that to yourself and you're saying it to yourself and you're saying it to the universe. So stage one is the invitation. Very simple. I intend to connect deeper to my intuitive gifts. I allow in my intuitive gifts to arrive to me more deeply and more profoundly. For example, any questions on stage one? No, you're a rock star. Like, whoa, I can just like (laughs) sit back here with my coffee. Like, I don't know. I thought I had to prepare all these things, questions for you. It's just like, nope. Just go ahead, take over, <laughs> pass the mic to Allison. No, I know. So I'm, I'm going to tell me if I'm talking too much. I get on a roll with this stuff. Okay, so we got get stage overly one. Excited. All right, so what's, what's stage two? Stage two is the calibration. And I like this stage because for those of listeners out there, and I know you're out there that says, yeah, I don't know. I think it's my intuition, but I like to second guess it. Or I'm not sure or I need proof, right? Some of us really want proof. That's okay. I get it. I'm with you. The calibration process gives you proof that what is happening to you is real. What is calibration? Well, as I said earlier, your intuition, your higher self is tapped in a really high vibrational energy. The energy in the universe, the divine, it's vibrating at a super high frequency. There's even a, a scale. It's called the Hertz rate, frequency rate. And it goes from zero to a thousand. So zero is essentially like trauma, right? Guilt, shame. And a thousand is essentially enlightenment, like God consciousness. So the higher we go up this scale towards a thousand, again, the more our door opens to our intuitive and spiritual gifts. So calibration is literally the process of raising your energetic frequency and your ability to vibrate at higher and higher vibrations and resonances. And by doing that, you're opening again that door to your intuition, cracking it open even wider. Okay. So we got stage one, stage two, stage, stage one is your, your invitation. Stage two is calibration. What is stage three? Let me just say one other thing about calibration. So people know like what it can look like. It will arrive to you as physical sensations. And that's what I'm saying. That will give your brain the evidence, the proof that it wants that what's happening is real. What are some of the uh, physical sensations you can expect to experience? Very common is an energetic tingling. Feels kind of cool, actually. You can feel it all over your body. You just feel kind of tingly. Sometimes you feel it. I call it the banana It's like you feel it right at your crown chakra. That's the area right at the top of your head. And you feel like it's like peeling back. It's a cool sensation. And that you feel this tingling right at your crown chakra. Sometimes the sensations are less cool. In extreme situations, you can have nausea and vomiting because you're like getting rid of some toxins inside Mm. of you that's weighing you down. You can feel ringing in the ear. You can feel just dizziness. That happened yeah. to me, actually. I was at somebody's retreat. I, I, I would give them a shout out, but I can't even remember whose it was, where they ended it with a sound bath. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, don't, I don't feel well right now. I have to get out of here right now. Like It was like at the end of the thing. And I normally would have wanted to linger and chat. And I normally like don't transition well. So I, I don't have that response. But I literally knew I had to get out of there immediately. It was like... Because it was too, it was, had brought stuff up for me and it was just too much for me. And it was just like this, uh, for anyone who doesn't know what a sound bath is, it's really, they're just playing on like, uh, what do you call it? Those metallic drums. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so it's just like making these tonal sounds that you would think it's, you know, it's just like a concert. It should be harmless, but it really brought up things for me. That was very likely a calibration. And it was bringing up things for you, which I'm going to talk about that comes in stage four, but the physical sensations were starting and you're, you are in the process of getting ready to release some stuff. And in doing that, your vibration was going higher and you were going to that, you know, you were raising up to the next level. So very, very cool. Okay. Even though it probably felt uncomfortable at it the time. Did. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I wasn't expecting it. And it was yeah. like, Oh, <laughs> weird. Yeah. And then I didn't want to, I'd also, I don't want to do that again, but I probably I know. should. You know, it's kind of like when you go to an exercise class and you're really sore the next day. And so, you know, it's good for you. Like, even though yes. you, it's not like you want to be sore, but you do want to be sore. Cause that's how, you know, something's working. It's a perfect analogy again with my gym analogy. Yes. It's uncomfortable. And at times it's very uncomfortable. Like in your example, but you get rewards. You get rewards for showing up and doing the work. Just like going to the gym and getting sore. If you stick with it, right, your rewards are, you know, nicer muscles, <laughs> stronger. <laughs> and the last thing I'll say about calibration is you can experience interrupted sleep. Unfortunately, calibration likes to kind of kick in about three o'clock in the morning. See, and I wake thought you that up. was my hormones. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> so it could be a mixture of both in there. <laughs> That's what my doctor said. Like, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there was calibration happening there too. It, it kind of kicks in in the middle. It kind of likes to get our attention. And during the day, we've got so much going on that um, sometimes our calibrations kick in right when we're sleeping. And well, it's it just trying to get our attention. It literally feels like my brain is waking me up to tell me something like, knock, knock, knock. Ugh, and then, but, but sometimes it's like their anxiety thoughts. So I'm not sure it's all in, intuitive stuff. So it's like... True. It could be a combination of both. But what you said is exactly how it looks in a calibration. Okay. It's like knock, 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 knock. And you're like, wait a brain. Why, what? Why are you waking right. me up? Right. Yes. Right. That's a calibration. Yes. Okay, that's so I should like not fight it and embrace it and listen. And because maybe it, the anxiety thoughts are coming up because I'm like fighting, pushing it all away. When you feel like your brain is trying to wake you up, I would not fight that. I mean, there is such thing as anxiety waking us up and, you know, we're, you know, whatever. That is a thing too. But I think what you're talking about, I'm sensing was def- like when that okay. happened. I don't know. I'm sensing in a calibration for you, Miriam. I like that explanation way better. Yes. <laughs> much sexier. Okay. So yes, take us yes, to the yes. next stage, Allison. Yes. Next stage is a cool one. It's a cool one, I think. And it's isolation. And let me quickly explain what that means. So when- <laughs> it's like the last we, two years. <laughs> right, right. Well, okay. So you probably are definitely going through a, cal- through a experience and an upgrade. So isolation, whenever we go through this process, just like in a hero's journey, we really get called outside of our regular routine of working, plugging into our phones, our computers, responding to our, uh, you know, our business, etc., our family, all the needs, right? So for an order us to really plug in and connect to what's going on, we need some quiet. We need some solitude. We need new perspective outside of the normal routine. So what will happen normally after an invitation, you're going to start getting calls for isolation, calls to isolation. It can be very subtle. Hey, wake up five minutes earlier in the morning and meditate, right? Or it can be very extreme. Like I haven't left my house in four days. Would that count? (laughs) That would count as isolation. Yes. So have you been called to kind of, uh, do you feel like you've been called to hibernate a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I just thought it was like I was getting weird because of the pandemic, but I've become very like hermity lately. It's like, yes. uh, Yes. It's not that I don't like people. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah, I feel I feel like more like an animal. Like I just want to like get a climb in bed with my cat and hunker down. Yes, that is what a call to isolation can look like. It's like you're going inside your cave. Yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. Yes. (laughs) Ooh, big calibration for you, Miriam. This is awesome. So again, your brain is going to come in and say, oh my gosh, get outside, you know, like, or, you know, whatever, maybe it's not, but 
oftentimes our brains will kick in and, and fight this call to isolation and say, you shouldn't be isolating. You should be doing something else. But I really invite you, Miriam, and listeners, when you feel this call to isolation, listen to it, allow it. I feel, I don't feel like leaving my house. I'm being called to my inner cave. That's your calibration talking to you. I mean, part of it also is, so I shared with you earlier, my listeners know I'm about to move from my home in Scarsdale to an apartment in New York City. So we have the the home in the country and we're getting rid of our suburban house and getting an apartment in New York City. And we've been packing up the house and things keep like all these layers of my house keep leaving. And it's been very unset, like all the things we've been talking about today, it is bringing so much up because it's like, I've lived in this house for 25 years and all it's like doing an archeological dick because, you know, as we keep removing layers, okay, now the book's got to go. Now the fur- the furniture we can't take with us has to go, all these things. And the more we do it, the less I want to leave the house, even though the house is less comfortable and less pretty because I keep undecorating the house and getting rid of things but it's making me feel like I don't want to leave. And Allison, you're the first one who's explained it to me like so well, like everyone else is like, well, just leave the house. What's the matter with you? Like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to leave. Well, Miriam, this is super powerful because I'm so glad you said that. Another really just pointing towards a calibration and upgrade is getting rid of things. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And I have to say, okay, so listeners, listen up, listen up. So. One of the things the real estate agent made us do was my studio was covered in paintings and on holes and I had and, and there was so much clutter and I, and they say there's no way we can sell the house looking this way. So I had to declutter everything and paint the walls and as soon as I cleaned it up suddenly I felt like painting and painting oh. in a direction that I've never done before. So this is something, uh, this is the first time I'm actually talking about this on the podcast, Allison. So I'm known for very realistic watercolors. So ever since this happened, I can't, I can only paint abstract. Like it's the only way I can't paint realistically anymore. Not that I can't, can't is the wrong word. I choose not to, like I just is like, I'm just painting in this very abstract way. And it's, I haven't like brought it forward yet because I'm still want to work with it within my, in the privacy of my cave right now. Not because I'm not proud of anything I've done, but just because it's so new to me. But anyway, yeah, continue. This is so good. This is such a great conversation. You are such a great case study for this because. (laughs) I know you're taking, Allison was taking notes, by the way. I was like. (laughs) (laughs) No, because. What you just did is also such a characteristic of an upgrade going in a new direction. You've been upgraded. You're a new energy. That new energy wants to play and dance. Very often it wants to do something different that you've never done before, create in a whole new way. And it doesn't mean the old way you won't return to it or do it again, but right, right now but you're in this I new really energy. I really felt exactly what all the self-development experts say. Like when I painted the walls and everything was all clean. I was like, all these energetic blocks were released. It was like, oh, okay. You know, like I'm so open. And then, and then I can't, I just want to paint all the furniture white too. That's the other thing that's happened. Um, no, this is a real thing. I, I, I will show Allison and I will like this. Oh my to, gosh, yeah, that that's used, white. Yeah. That used to be brown. Uh, <laughs> so, like, like literally. Yes. Yes. No, that, was, that was not even for the real estate agent. <laughs> After we got a, a contract on the house, I just I started painting the furniture. And then I said to my husband, would it be so terrible if I repaint the walls? Like now that we sold the house, he said, yes. <laughs> it could be. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's so good. It's so okay. good. All right. Take us to the next stage. We'll bring it home now because okay. here's just the perfect case study because you also are experiencing stage four, which is the initiation. This is normally the most uncomfortable part of the journey. It's exactly everything you just said, Miriam. When we get go through initiation, we're, get, we're getting called to a newer version of ourselves. Whenever there's growth, there's always the discomfort associated with growing pains, right? Well, normally this initiation is we're facing some sort of fear. You know, we're facing some sort of like resistance, you know, like in your case, Miriam, you're resisting right now, leaving the house Yes. or, or, yeah, yeah. So this is your initiation and you're right now you're facing your fears. 
you're facing your fears every day. You know, like as you're getting rid of things, as you're decluttering, you're making big decisions and, you know, you're, you're doing it. But with each stage, you know, you're, you're facing some big emotions. And when you do that, when you face those emotions and experience them and get to the other side of them, you're releasing. Yeah. You're releasing that stuff. And like when you decluttered the room. Yeah. And it's not just so for people who maybe are not ready to understand it, like on the woo level, it's like there's things that I was getting rid of that represented parts of me that. OK, so I'm going to not do it with my art so much, but like it's kind of like when you get rid of your maternity clothes, you're saying to the universe, I am never having a baby again. So there were certain things I was getting rid of certain art materials I was getting rid of, certain books I was getting rid of. And each time I got rid of them, I was saying, this is not a part of who I am anymore. That was huge, hugely, huge. like hugely powerful. And then also having this idea, well, I can't take it with me to the next phase of my life. So therefore I'm letting go because moving on to this next phase is more important to me than holding on to this past. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Yes. So you are you're kind of going through the initiation process right now. And these stages aren't linear. You know, they come and go as they come and go, but you're in this initiation of facing, confronting certain fears and being in the fear, releasing it and getting to the other side, letting it go. So something better, higher, more aligned to you in your life right now can arrive. Mm, Beautiful. Okay. Take us to the, the, we're on to the fifth and final, right? Yeah. Fifth and final is communication. What does that mean? That is, so it's not like this is a one and done process, unfortunately. Stage five is really getting to that, going to the gym of your intuition. This is like, okay, I've, I'm, I'm going through or I've gone through this upgrade. Now, let me with intention every day if possible or when it arrives to you to do, mindfully with intention, connect into that intuition, C- you know, talk to it, commune with it, you know, really powerful questions to ask your intuition is who are you calling me to be? Who are you calling to me be? And what are you calling me to do? Mm. And just be in that connection and really notice, like, how do you receive messages from your intuition? Everybody receives differently. But I say most of us receive it from the neck down. From the neck down is when our intuitive, where our, our intuitive voice really speaks to us through our heart, through our gut, you know, that gut response, right? And when we're up in our head, it's normally when we're too much in your head, right? I was just listening to the Olympics and I heard the announcer say, oh, they got in their head, right? Mm. It's because somebody had fallen down or whatever. Yeah, triple ups and didn't work out. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's exactly right. They got out of their heart. They got out of that intuitive flow and they got in their head and the fall happened and we've all done it, right? So when you want to connect into that intuition, It is connecting and being inside the body, listening to your feelings, tuning into your heart energy, tuning into your gut. Everybody kind of connects into their intuition a little bit differently, but it's in your body below the neck, typically. Okay. Okay. So I want to put like a highlight through something you just said, because we just talked about this with another guest. And I believe I'm hoping that episode was is published before this one. But if it's not, it's a future. It's with Alexia. Vernon, and she talks about that same question when her husband proposed to her, she asked herself the question, who do I want to be? And you just asked the same question, who do I want to be? And that's the most powerful question that anyone can ask themselves. Like, who do you want to be in 2022? And then the other thing I would, I I always like to ask my clients is, how do you want to feel? Who do you want to be? And how do you want to feel? I think this is a great place to end, Allison, don't you? I, I love it. Yep. Oh, yeah. And okay. those are, if you ask those questions, you will connect to your intuition too. Okay. Those are intu- yes. All right. So if you liked what Allison had to say here today, I'm sure you're going to love her podcast. It is Soul Guide Radio. You did. Okay. You got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I'm sure you're going to love her podcast. It's Soul Guide Radio. You can check it out on all the podcast places. And we've included links to all things Allison in the show notes at shulmanart.com forward slash 185. We will also link to Lexi's episode. And we'll try to remember to also link to the, to the Greyhounds at the Metropolitan And if we can still find it, the live stream, but that one may not be available anymore. Okay. And don't forget, 
If you like today's episode, you're going to absolutely love the must listen roundup of all my favorite episodes around mindset. So head on over to shulmanart.com forward slash playlist and grab your binge worthy podcast playlist today. Again, that's shulmanart.com forward slash playlist. Alrighty, Allison, do you have any last words for my listeners before we call this podcast complete? Yeah, I would love to leave your listeners with an invitation, an invitation. And I invite you, dear listener, to go to the gym of your intuition and get to know how your intuition speaks to you. Is it through your feelings? Do you get visions? Do you hear messages? Do you just get gut inner knowings? And I really invite you to just carve out five minutes, not more. I know personal development people are always asking you to carve out five minutes. So carve out two minutes, carve out two minutes to ask these powerful questions that Miriam raised. Who are you calling? Who am I calling myself to be? Who are you calling me to be? How do I want to feel? And just see how your intuition responds to you. All right. All right, my friend. Thank you so much for being with me here today. I'll see you the same time, same place next week. Stay inspired. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration Place podcast. Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course, on shulmanart.com.